Okay, ladies and gentlemen, welcome again to this fine episode of State of Society. My good name is Mike G, and this is episode five. Now, we are going to do something different today, and this is to give you a story of a gentleman who was inspired profoundly by an organization called the Initiatives of Change International, and another gentleman who we are also going to see a bit of his story. His name is Ravi Prakash Dani. The first gentleman is Deepak Malik from Bangalore, South India, and he has an amazing story of how he was transformed from a troublemaker to a change maker. The second story talks about how personal change can affect your own life. Dr. Ravi Prakash Dani is a vice chancellor at Akola University in Madhya Pradesh, Central India. And he is an amazing gentleman who is knowledgeable. He's going to tell us how personal change affected people around him. So enjoy these two episodes and I hope that you will take something home. My name is Deepak Malik and I'm from Bangalore. I met this idea of MRA, Moral Rearmament, which is now called Initiatives of Change, over 40 years ago when I came to Panchgani to attend a students conference, having been sent by the Vice Chancellor to seven troublemakers of the university. On the first day we realized the Vice Chancellor probably sent us for making us straight. And after the first session, we realized his plan. So we got out and said, okay, rather than these people making us straight, we'll make them straight. And we decided each one will eat 30 chapatis so that the flour will run out of the kitchen and they will get straightened. But that was the day one. And on the day two, when I heard this song, when you point my finger, there are three more pointing back at me. It made me thinking that I am the one always blaming somebody else for the wrongs in the society. If everything is wrong in the nation, it is the Prime Minister. If anything is wrong in the university, it is a Vice Chancellor. If at home anything is wrong, it's my father. And I never think of the three pointing back at me. And that day I took a decision that I will sit quiet and listen to my inner voice and say what it speaks to me. The first thought which came to me was, you are the problem. You need not to be part of the problem, but be part of the solution. The purpose of your life should not be to be part of the problem, but part of the solution. That was the journey which began 45 years ago and I have been on that journey for the last 40 years. Not for a moment I have regretted the steps I took at Asia Plateau in 1970. You can't change things by pointing to others. You've got to be the change you believe others should. In my first job as the regional head for agribusiness of Shaw Wallace based in Pune in Western India, my company supplied a large input for development to the block development officer of Jalgaon in the Khandesh area. Normally the governmental supplies, the money comes after 45 days of utilization. But this money wasn't coming. I would put pressure on my area manager in Jalgaon to collect the money. He would tell me, sir, you don't get government money like this you have to pay 10%, that's 50 lakh rupees bribe to the local official, then you will get this money. I said to my area manager, we have decided that we will run this company ethically and uh, we do not wish to be part of the problem. We want to be part of the solution. So we want to get the money without bribes. He was a seasoned person twice my age, he said. How to get things done. But my thought was very clear that 
I will not be part of the problem. And in my morning quiet time, I got a clear thought that I should go to Jalgaon and meet this official and explain to him what steps of change I took after coming to Asia Plateau and why I believe I want to continue in this journey of ethical business. When I told this to the official in Jalgaon, he said to me, you don't need to do that. Hasn't Mr. So-and-so told you that you need to just give 10% developmental rebate to the local distributor and he will fix the rest. You don't have to bribe. I also won't take any bribes. But the Jalgaon distributor can fix up the thing. I said to the official, so that would be an indirect way of bribing and that will still be becoming part of the problem. Please help me in this journey to be finding a solution to the corruption and uh, larger issues we find in this country. To this, the official said, okay, you can go back. I reached back to Pune and exactly on Monday next week, we got a demand draft for 5 crore rupees from this official without having paid a single paisa bribe. That was my first experiment with conducting business ethically. My experience over the last 40 years tells me, more often than not, it is our choice to be looking for convenience rather than conviction that we make compromises and then blame everybody else for corruption. We take shortcuts in life. We don't want to stand up for what we believe. We don't want to stand up for conviction we have. But I want to see a society which learns to share and care. And I believe youth of today who need to look at how can we be builders of a society which is not based on selfishness and capitalism, but based on sharing and caring. of uh, personal change, I think the most important thing that I have learned, and I have learned it through training in initiatives of change, is that change is a continuous process. It is a daily decision. It is not a one-time decision that I will take and say that I'm free from it now. I don't have to worry about it. It's not, it doesn't work like that. And it is only when you listen to the inner voice and then remember that this is a decision that you have to revive today and ask for strength, at least for today, that I will stick to my decisions then I think it is where you appreciate the importance of absolute standards very closely. The example is if you give up any of these personal habits, smoking and drinking, you have to be absolutely pure at least for one day that you will not smoke or you will not drink. And it is only when you have a clear perception of what is happening that you are able to appreciate the absolute standards and then if you're absolutely pure about a certain things, not doing a certain things, it gives you the freedom to realize that you can now afford to be absolutely honest and say that, okay, I did not like you because you were opposed to a certain habit of mine. And then you find the freedom to extend the absolute standards. And the most important standard is absolute love. But it's the most difficult thing to practice. But the experience is if I detach my expectations and stay strong on living life one day at a time, I am better able to appreciate the importance of absolute standards. And in the end, 
if I'm able to share my decisions, if I'm able to work with another human being, then I begin to appreciate the importance of teamwork, which is the crux of any kind of social development. So I think there is a number of important messages that the program gives provided a person is willing, a person is ready. But this is a very unique experience which continues even today and some of the most exciting things that have happened in my life have been due to the ability to listen to my inner voice and appreciate the same quality that is present in the others. Okay, I am glad that you've watched these two stories and I hope that you're going to take something home. And for me, these gentlemen have meant something in my own life. And when I watch them, I look at my own life and see where I need to put things right. So until we meet again, thank you very much for watching and remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Experience Media Kenya. Thank you.